Someone is collecting weeds by the side of the road, on walkways, and at the edges of buildings. This is not random. They are doing it with purpose. They have measured out an area of about 5 metres square, and they are pulling up all the plants, all the weeds in that area, roots and all. The process is scientific. They carefully record the location and the date of collection. But this is not just science. It is also an art project, and these scientific details will become part of the title of that artwork. All the weeds collected from that area by this curious individual will be combined, amassed, into one new creation to form a superweed, or in the words of the German philosopher Goethe, an archetypal plant, an uberplant, the creation of a new class of plant, a hybrid connected only by where they were found. The artist is Australian Carolyn Rothwell, and her art combines the three elements of observational art, curiosity about our surroundings, observing with an almost scientific attention to detail, and finding meaning in what we see and draw. Carolyn Rothwell's art materials also express her scientific curiosity about her surroundings. In 2015, during an artist residency at Temple University in Philadelphia, she made a large outdoor wall drawing in the university campus by using carbon soot emitted from one of the smokestacks located at Temple University. The drawing Rothwell created using soot was of a threatened Philadelphian plant species known as the Juncus alpinus, like the plant which is disappearing under the environmental pressures caused by pollution, the soot drawing was also likely to fade and wash off the wall within the space of months. Curiosity, scientific attention to detail, and making meaning of the world around us all combine in this creative project. Artists and scientists have been recording their observations of the plant world for thousands of years. We find beautiful rock drawings of leaves in ancient Africa and frescoes in ancient Greece and the buried city of Pompeii. Later, from the 16th century, we see art and science coming together in the plant images of Albrecht Dürer, Leonardo da Vinci and Elizabeth Blackwell. Then, in the 20th century, we see artists such as Frida Kahlo, Lucien Freud and Ellsworth Kelly drawing leaves as symbols, metaphors or pure forms. New drawing materials also emerge. Lourdes Castro creates cyanotype silhouettes of leaves created when the leaves are laid on top of paper coated with a light-sensitive formula which is then exposed to sunlight. And in a major art project set in the Amazonian forest by Swiss artist Ursula Biemann and Ecuadorian architect Paula Tavares, video and photography take the place of drawing and painting as they observe, record, collect, document and denounce a situation of environmental exploitation by oil companies. Que la gente de nuestra comunidad utiliza este para hacer remedio para la para el, la picadura de los zancudos, de la fiebre muy alta. Esta es la quina. La gente del pueblo ya conoce que aquí hay mucha quina y se viene también a buscar. Está todo esto es pelado, vea. Todo esto que usted ve es pelado. Esto es quina. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up and comment down below. Now let's dive into this video. In this video on how to start drawing by observation, the examples we've looked at remind us of what I think are the three elements of observational art. Curiosity about our surroundings. Observing with attention to detail 
and finding meaning in what we see and draw. They help us approach the challenge of learning to draw from nature with real purpose. These artists show us that if we develop our curiosity and patient observation skills, we can grow our creativity, enabling us to express ourselves and our connection to the world we live in. Why have I chosen leaves? I'm always looking for ideal projects for starting or refreshing students' observational drawing skills, and I love the accessible charm of leaf drawing for elementary school children. Leaves are the right size for creating careful and detailed drawings quite quickly. Their relative flatness as three-dimensional shapes means that they do not usually pose complex spatial challenges. A suit line drawing because you just need to draw the edges and internal patterns of the veins to have a successful and accurate image. We don't worry about shading or colour, and I call leaves accessible and charming subjects because they're not as complex or intimidating for beginners as drawing the hand, for instance, or the face, or a still life. When we're drawing leaves, it's hard to be discouraged because with each new leaf that you draw, you will see your technique improve. Here is the art activity. You will need your A4 drawing pad and a graphite pencil, HB or B or 2B will be fine, and a ruler. Drawing only with line, Find 10 different species of leaves from around the garden or the playground and draw them six to a page. Don't pluck the leaves, leave them on the tree or the bush while you're drawing. When you've drawn a leaf, Use your ruler to measure the length and the width of the actual leaf and write the information next to your drawing. If you can name the species of the leaf, that's a bonus. Your drawings don't have to be the same size as the actual leaf. For exceedingly small leaves, it's easier to draw them larger than real life so that you can get the details right. But for super large leaves, it's okay if you draw them slightly smaller than life size so they fit on the page. Now remember this is observational drawing, so don't draw the leaves from memory or your imagination. Get as close as you can to the real leaves. Sit or stand still and look patiently. Is there a trick to being successful? Yes, there is. And here is my tip. Firstly, think about this. If you think this exercise is tricky, if you think that drawing accurately is difficult, remember that your hands are actually very clever and experienced with details. You already know how to feed yourself, to send messages on your phone, tie shoelaces, use a keyboard or game console. Your hands are clever, so trust them. So what is the trick here? Well, don't worry about your hands, it's your eyes. You need to slow your eyes down. Yes, make your eyes travel as slowly as a snail around the details of the leaf you are drawing. Often our eyes are darting across the subject, glancing from one detail to another. But in observational drawing, we need to make our eyes travel slowly, patiently, not bouncing from one point to the other, but creeping slowly, patiently. If you give your hand good information, you will make a great drawing. And the way to give your hands good drawing information is to look very, very slowly. Make your eyes move as slowly as a snail slithering across the leaf. Thanks for watching. If you're a teacher, before you go, check out my extra notes.
in the description below.